My name is Wash Westmoreland, the director and co-writer of Colette, and this is Notes on a Scene. How on earth did you two meet? Our fathers served together in the army. Really? Married? The wild days are done, eh? On the contrary, the wild days have just begun. The script for this film was written in 2001 um, by my late husband, uh, Richard Glatzer, and for 16 years we dreamed of making this film. So it means everything to me and to his memory that I finally get to put it on the big screen. The movie is about Colette, um, a writer who lived in France at the turn of the century in her marriage to her first husband, who claimed credit for her work, who is known by the single name of Willie. This scene happens at the beginning of the movie, they're newly married, and it's really about Colette's introduction to society as Willie takes her to the salon of Madame de Caive. So we go from a wide shot here of a French street that's actually the side of the Budapest Opera House, and the camera moves into a closer shot, which is like a frame within a frame of Colette and Willie within the carriage, which is right here. Throughout the film, we look for these frames within frames, be they windows or mirrors that kind of contain Colette. You're always wondering when Colette is going to break out of her containment, which is really the main thing of the story. What they're actually talking about is a stain on the dress right here, a toothpaste stain. What is it? I think it's toothpaste. Let's have a look. Even in the 19th century, people had these kind of problems. Traditionally in costume dramas, I think a lot of things are very beautifully presented and we dream of the past as this perfect place. It was actually an imperfect time. People had bodies, people made mistakes, people got stains on their clothes. This is not your average costume drama. How are you, Count? Well, thank you. Oh, are you rogue, Willie? I see you've brought us an orphaned relative. Mm -hmm. A secret love child. Very good, very good. No, may I introduce to you my wife, Gabrielle Sidney Colette? So here we have Colette being introduced to two rather imperious Salonites. The camera keeps spinning around a circle of conversation so that we can see what Colette is seeing, which is these people judging her, looking at her, critiquing her. And then at the same time, if we continue, we um, see Willie managing the situation using his My verbal dexterity, as Willie always did, to take over the room. Delighted. Well, astonished, actually. We also see here what Colette is experiencing, how she's kind of intimidated by these people, how it's not what she expected. You can actually see colour coming up in Kira's cheeks, like the, feeling the embarrassment of the character in this situation. Kira in this scene really does seem like a 20-year-old. She really has this sort of very youthful and slightly uh, unsure way of moving. Where are you from, you sweet thing? saint sauveur and prissy It's in Burgundy. Ah, oh, is that where you got your dress? For a reference, we looked at a movie called Coal Miner's Daughter and Sissy Spacex performance as Loretta Lynn. She goes from 14 years old to 40 years old without a single date card. You can just tell the change in time from her, the change in her deportment. And we just said that's what we want to do with Colette. This is one of the great scenes for costumes. Um, our costume designer, Andrea Fleisch, was obsessed with the turn of the century and did a combination of clothes that she designed inspired by um, pictures of clothes from the times. And then also sometimes we'd find bolts of material actually from the time that we could make into clothes. And then sometimes we'd find these great pieces that had just been in someone's closet for a hundred years. Willie, married. The wild days are done, eh? On the contrary, the wild days have just begun. Ah, Willie! And here we have uh, Ray Panthaki, who's playing the writer Pierre Weber. And he was one of the writers, the ghost writers, who would be writing books for Willie. This is the first time in the story we hit this theme. Very pleased to meet you. It's due on Tuesday. Uh, right. In real life, Pierre Weber was uh, white. And at the time I was casting, there were several high profile decisions taken to cast white actors in roles of Asian people. And I thought, well, time to do it the other way around. In this film, I cast uh, Asian actors for historically white characters, black actors for historically white characters. I have trans people playing cisgender people, I have lesbians playing straight people. It's like, let actors be actors, but invite everybody to the party. Interestingly here as well, we have the chandeliers that are floor mounted. We wanted more like a shadowy, feel like pockets of light throughout the salon. So Michael Carlin, the production designer, had this idea of these floor mounted chandeliers and we had about 20 of them throughout the salon. These chandeliers give this beautiful visual that you can actually walk through the lights. Uh, just amuse yourself for a moment, Gabrielle. 
It's simple. It's an 800 word sketch. <laughs> Small ghost. There's a shot here. We get a window into what she is feeling. It's not what she expected. In the village where she grew up, she's the star of the village. She was the star of her class at school. The brightest, the smartest. It was her world. She's now finding herself as a little fish in a big bowl and she feels overwhelmed. So we go from this very tight shot here to a wider shot where you see she's just got space around her. She's just kind of on her own. She's just kind of floating and we feel her awkwardness. But then she notices something in a corner and comes close and it's a turtle, or as the British say, a tortoise with a jeweled shell on a silver tray. The idea for this tortoise came from a book by J.K. Huisman called Against Nature, or Ourobor, a symbolist book that was essentially against naturalism. You poor thing. You want the earth and the grass, don't you? How Colette, coming from the country, was very much about what was natural, what felt natural to her. And here we see in this moment this bond between them because they both feel completely woefully out of place in this salon. I must point out at this juncture, because I'm an animal rights person, that this is special um, gelatin-based paint and gelatin-based glue for the jewels, and uh, special handlers ensured that the tortoise was comfortable during this process, and no tortoises were harmed during the making of this movie. But the tortoise did give an incredible naturalistic performance, not a false note in there. So here we have my favourite shot in the movie. Again, Colette is framed. She's contained within these different frames. It's a very uh, Max Ophel's influence shot. Earrings of Madame Deux was one of the films we watched again and again. Here we see things in the background, like the magician lighting a candle, or we see the snake here, but we don't see them clearly. We're focusing on Colette. We're focusing what's going on in her mind as she's walking through the salon. So this being a long shot, I put things in front of her and things behind her. The frames got action in lots of different planes and that keeps the shot very interesting and adds to the density and richness of the world. And of course she's looking for Willie, eventually she finds him and this is the time when we do rack focus. And being Willie, he is flirting with another woman. Um, Willie was very promiscuous. Again, at the beginning of the movie, this is setting up one of our stories. What are the terms of this marriage and how is Colette going to negotiate that? So then I think the standard thing in a scene like this would be to end on Colette's horrified face. But instead, we have this moment here. And this was taken from a book by Emil Zola called Nana. He talks about this all-night salon. At the end, they poured milk into the piano. Inside the piano was actually black garbage bags, so no pianos were harmed during the making of this movie.